Hey, this is Eric with programwitheric.com, and today we're going to look over Ember data and Ember models. We're just going to go over a, a high-level overview and just some basics of it. So if we look at the GitHub page for Ember data, you can see Ember data is a library for robust, robustly managing model data. So it's going to act as your data store. It's going to be the interface between your Ember project and your back end, so it'll retrieve information from it. And it makes it easier so you don't have to write a bunch of Ajax calls and do everything yourself to do that. But uh, beware, you don't have to use Ember data. You can roll your own solution. There's also other things out there that you can use to get data from the back end for your website. Um, one thing important about Ember data is that you can see they have different adapters. One of the most common ones is REST adapter. And what I mean by that is we're assuming that your backend sends JSON data back to your server and the JSON data is in a certain format. And you can see it's kind of in this format here, right? as if you had a post, you have an ID, title, and author, and if you have multiple posts, it then shows it as plural. And then you have site, title, author, and you have different objects it's sending these JSON back to you. To go ahead and to mock the backend server instead of creating something like Express or, or Node or Rails, we'll just go ahead and use an add-on called Ember CLI Mirage. This makes it really, really easy to create a, a backend and just to mock data to send to our server while we're testing Ember data. Um, to install it, you just run this command, Ember install Ember CLI Mirage. I already have a project I went ahead and created earlier called Book Example, and I went ahead and installed that, that add-on already. And like I said, before I'm an Ember install Ember CLI Mirage. I won't do it again, but that's how you do it. And once again, I have the Ember serve running on another page here. So you can see my website is running. So let's start with a couple of easy examples here. Before we almost forgot, before we start, we need to go ahead and, and let's create a route for our application. And this route inside Ember uh, is is where we'll put our model data in. And this, and we'll just say no here, we don't overwrite anything. So if we take a look here at our routes folder and our application, so this is for the whole application. We can create a method called model, and this is all by convention. And model will just, just to show you what we can do, we can return we can just return an array. We can return any data here. And then once we have this route and this uh, model created, we can go back into our templates and go to our application file. And we can simply create something like this. Each model as mom m. It doesn't really matter the name here as long as you have model that refers to the model in the route. And here we can do M. And if we just refresh here, you see one, two, three, four, five. So it went ahead and, and grabbed everything from our, our data there. And it was just an array, so it just displayed everything in the array. So that's not too exciting, but it kind of gives you an idea of how this works. So every your application template here is linked to the application route. And another way to display that is if you have this Ember Chrome adapter here, a Chrome plugin, you can take a look at the view tree. You can see an application view here. If I go all views, and I click around a little bit, you could see, here it is, the routes. So we have the application right here, we have loading, error, index, but you know that it'll tell you inside here that your route name's application, the route is application. So, and the template is called application. So you know that this route application is going to be talking to your template application. So if we want to do something a little bit more interesting, let's exit this, we can go ahead and create a model. So let's create a well, before we do that, we want to mock some data. So we have this app folder, and inside that folder we have Mirage. And inside Mirage we have a factory. 
and we have scenarios in a config. So we can go ahead and create a factory here for book. And what since we have the add-on installed, we can use this generate command with factory because it has a blueprint for it. And if we go back into our application, we can then go to Mirage, Factories, and here's our book. And this has a library called Faker, which allows us to create fake data. So inside here, this is where we can we can tell, kind of define what the data is going to look like that we want to get back from our backend server. So Mirage is acting as our, our mock backend. So you can go Faker, Lorem, Sentence. You can have author, and you can return faker dot name dot find name, and then finally year faker dot date dot past. Okay, so now we have an idea of what we want our factory to do, and then we can look at scenarios. And what we want to do here is we can just uncomment this. We want the server to create lists. We want to create 10 books, uh, 10 of the factory books. That's how you do this. And by the way, this faker.lorm.sentence, you can look up faker, the library, and see how to do this, the API. It's not too bad. And then in the config.js, We'll just go, it tells you here through all these comments on how to do everything. So we can do shorthand this.get books. And this tells you, this tells Mirage what paths to send information back on. Well, we'll just do one for right now. And that should be it. So let's exit this. And we'll go ahead and use the command line here. By the way, we don't since I'm using Vim, I don't have to necessarily go to the command line, but just to make this simple and easier to see, I'll go to the command line. I can do ember and then G. And then I want to create an adapter. Because we said we're using the REST adapter. And by default, actually the newer versions of Ember has the JSON API adapter as default, but so we'll use the application here. Ember G model book. What's the name of it? And then how we want to do it here. Okay, there we go. And we go back into our model network. Here's what it should look like. Here's the title, author, year, and this is going to be the format of the data. So now we can go back into our routes. Instead of returning this array we can return using ember data the store dot find all and then book and this dot store dot find all is part of the data store for ember data and this just tells it to return back all the books and what'll happen is when this is this model is retrieved it's gonna do a, a JSON get command back to the server looking for um, in slash book and looking for data. So now if we go back to templates, application template, instead of doing this, we can do once again each model as this time we'll do book. And we'll do slash each. And then we can do book let me try this again book dot author book dot title book dot date book breaks at the end and just to make it a little, a little bit easier, title, author, date. All right, 
We saved it all. Let's see what we got. Nope, oh, there's a problem. Okay. So you can see here in the console that says while processing index assertion error normalized response must return valid JSON API document. And what happened here is that the adapter is still set to the JSON API adapter, and of course that's wrong. Uh, this is by default, but we are wanting to use the REST adapter, and Ember CLI Mirage defaults to the REST adapter. So we just need to take away this and type in REST, save it, and now we'll refresh it. Great, now here's all our data, title, author, and date. So we're missing the date. I actually put year, so I just had a typo there. So we'll go book.year. And here it is. Of course, you can use a library like Moment and make this look a lot nicer. But for the now, we can see here's all the data it put in. It looks like it just randomly put a dot in one of them. But we have all the data here. If we refresh it, it actually has new data every time we refresh it. So it doesn't persist it in that way. But this is a good way of knowing that we're talking to Ember CLI. Uh, our Mirage backend and that we're using Ember data. So that's just a quick idea. Uh, this is just a quick tutorial on how to use Ember data. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments below. And also, if you see my, please subscribe. And there's a link to my Ember CLI or Ember JS cookbook, which goes over Ember CLI Mirage and a lot more. Thanks.